Portugal, in the Department of Economics, Management, Industrial Engineering, and Tourism. Uh, he, he, he has taught many, many courses in microeconomics, European economics, microeconomic analysis, international economics, energy economics, energy policy, and regulation. She's currently a member of the Governance, Competitiveness, and Public Policy Research Unit and a member of research teams at the University of Aveiro, participating in several European sponsored social economic projects, competencies for graduates. She was <laughs> the director of the PhD in energy system and climate change at the University of Aveiro. She is a co-author of many, many scientific articles in reference journals, books, book chapter, in the subjects of energy economics, energy policy, and regulation, and of course in, in economics. For me, it's a pleasure because uh, with my, my friend Pepe and other, other colleagues, uh, work today in, a, in the Unlock project. You know, Marta, you are going to talk about that? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a very interesting project uh, centered in creativity uh, through game-based learning and higher education. Uh, uh, and we work, uh, we are now currently working in escape room uh, and, she, and using education. So for me, it's a pleasure to, to be here with Marta. Thank you very much, Marta, for coming here and stay with us. Uh, she is going to present uh, uh, the uh, 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 talk uh, uh, entitled Towards Sustainability All Together and Forward for Nature, People and Planet. Marta, thank you very much. Thank you and good morning everyone and here and uh, in Zoom or in a digital platform. Uh, I'm really sorry, I understand perfectly Spanish, but I don't speak even if I'm Portuguese. It's a kind of very difficult for us because it's very similar. So we, we start speaking with our hands and very loudly. So you would appreciate if I would stop and speak English. Uh, so thank you for having me in this um, wonderful Granada. It's my first time here in, in this fruitful conference. Um, starting uh, my, my speech that um, hopefully you will bear with me for half an, around half an hour, um, I will let you know why I'm here. And <laughs> Unlock is one of the reasons, and I'm quite happy that I met this Granada uh, team. Um, fortunately and unfortunately, I have to say, because it was a, was a, uh, a switch. So um, as uh, Pablo was introducing me, um, I just wanted to say that I was uh, the director until... 10, 10 days ago. So <laughs> if that was the reason why I'm, I was here, uh, is lost. But anyway, uh, so you have my email, just uh, drop me an email at the end, or let's speak at the end. So where is the University of Aveiro? Because sometimes it's quite difficult to explain. We say that it's between Porto and Coimbra. That is a strange way of saying. Uh, so it's, miss, it's just missing. Ah, is there because here is missing the map. So um, it's a very young university. We are just turning 47 years. For, Port for Portuguese universities, it's young and is very engineering based. So I'm from economics. I'm a kind of uh, an aside uh, uh, course. So why, why this title was a kind of uh, also uh, <laughs> uh, suggested title at some point. Um, so towards sustainability, I think is what uh, um, many of us do as research in life and also in life as individuals. And that, that would be one of the aims of my talk. I will be speaking to you as uh, researchers, but also as individuals, as members of communities and uh, members of universities, may maybe managers, so I will be speaking uh, with different hats, as we say in Portugal. And uh, these three words, the four words, so we have to go ahead. I mean, considering COVID, post-COVID or not, we have to go ahead with the sustainability for nature, for people, and for planets. 
I have very young um, children, I have two children, and uh, um, I don't know if uh, you came across those books where we, we, we find words that repeat during the book. So we'll be kind of uh, that way that I will be speaking about, okay? Just <laughs> to <laughs> take you on this path, uh, knowing uh, that people, planet, nature will come out uh, often. So everyone knows the definition of sustainability, of course. Uh, uh, everyone is aware of the definition for sustainable, sustainable development from the Brundtland report in 1987. So I will not repeat it. This is just a slide that should be in a, a presentation about sustainability. And everyone is aware of the sustainable development goals. We work on them, uh, we practice on them, on in some of them, the 17. Um, and uh, this was a, a universal call uh, by the United Nations to call for action. Uh, some of us on our research, we came across the problem that some of the um, sustainable development goals are more focus on lower income countries, and now my <laughs> economics background, uh, but uh, we can find in many countries, some part of them where we can develop and we can support these uh, goals. So the idea is to improve the lives and prospects of everyone everywhere. So, um, to, to have this uh, concept of sustainability into practice, uh, in fact, the United Nations, they launched this uh, uh, 2030 agenda um, that introduces this uh, sustainable development goals. Uh, but in fact, we need to find um, several more micro measures that we should uh, work on first and research on also. Uh, and uh, the triple bottom line was a proposal to be more uh, into practice. The idea of sustainability is to mix, to try to uh, find a balance between social requirements, economic requirements and environmental requirements. In many of our research, we find one of the topics that is more on our side, or we are more on the side of one topic. Uh, usually, I mean economic side. Um, sometimes we mix the social with the economic, but uh, to have the environmental um, balance, usually I work with uh, um, environmental engineers. So I look for the expertise of someone else. Uh, so the idea of this uh, triple bottom line is to have um, a common background where everyone can find uh, their way and uh, to um, incorporate these uh, aims into uh, an integration of uh, social, environmental, and economic performance for human being and uh, to have benefits for future generations, not forgetting the nowadays generations. So I will be speaking about uh, three kinds of macroeconomic perspectives, uh, more on people and less on governments, more on what we can do and more where the research can be found. Of course, there are people researching on these topics already, but it's just like a challenge. And one of the slides is uh, in fact a, a challenge. So we as managers of companies, some of us are project managers being European projects like Pablo was saying, or national projects. Um, we need to, um, be aware that sustainability is an integral, in, integrated part of all practices, or it, the, it should be. Um, the idea that uh, businesses have a role 
in order to achieve sustainability in society and that the classic approach of managing it doesn't uh, work anymore or it, it has to be adapted to uh, follow uh, sustainability. So companies, managers, they should focus their efforts on incorporating the sustainable development uh, goals into their management. Uh, it's important to understand all the implications of this, all the um, work that is related with thinking better, uh, or thinking twice, I will be speaking about that. Uh, so now is, is time for business, for business researchers, for practitioners in business to take action, to understand what they can do and what are the implications of doing and not doing. That is also a concept of economics that we, we actually use very often, that is, uh, uh, the cost of opportunity. If you don't do, then there's a cost associated. Um, so, uh, th th of course, this can be very challenging uh, for uh, managers and for organizations. And uh, uh, as we study every day with the management colleagues, we, uh, we think, and uh, there's proofs of, for that, that uh, uh, firms, they act by example, by copying others. So the idea of this European project where the University of Avaro participates, and myself also, is uh, to support project managers in order to think better what they do. And we do that uh, sharing knowledge experience, sharing good practices, examples, giving um, options saying you have to do this but you can do in a good way or in a sustainable way or in a not so sustainable way so this uh, is uh, an european project that just started one year ago and the idea is to uh, give organizations any kind of organizations universities research units uh, firms um uh, and uh, make them uh, think twice, so <laughs> analyze their own practices and routines and considering that they can establish good practices and by setting examples. So the idea is to have a place, a, a database, of course, a digital database where managers can go to have ideas. Of course, that they can speak uh, uh, to each other, of course, they, they know each other, but uh, this is a kind of repository of uh, best practices in European projects, but also that can be applied to any project and any organization. So one of the, the challenges that I have is that we have a, an open call. I don't know if this is very us usual in keynote spe speech, but uh, it's a challenge. If you work on this, if you want to work on the, this topic of sustainability in project management, we have a call open that, uh, I mean, it should be after February also, but it's a very um, focus on ways of, of uh, applying and on uh, uh, having sustainability in project management and also uh, implications of this, uh, impl implications of the actions and uh, case studies. Considering each of us as individuals, uh, everyone knows the global footprint, right? I don't know if every one of us did there, um, Footprint, you should at least once in your life because it's very challenging for your way of living sometimes because, because you, you always think that you are less harmful to planet than you are. Um, we had a very um, surprising results in Portugal for, municipal, for certain municipalities and uh, for... Uh, um, organizations. Um, so the footprint, as you know, um, gives you uh, an, an indicator on the area that uh, the population, an individual uh, uses to achieve 
uh, its livelihood. So it's what you harm the planet. Uh, and uh, as I was saying, is a way of you to think on your behavior and on your the implications of uh, your behavior. Um, one of the indicators that came out of the um, carbon footprint was the Earth Overload Day that last year was on the 29th of July. So after the 29th of July, we are already using the planet of the next generations. And, and that, as we know, is uh, uh, very um, worrying, the, is the minimum that we can say. Um, one of the, um, the, the implications, the consequences of this indicator is that we can actually change our uh, behaviors individually, and uh, we can think about what we do and uh, what we can change to change our path, to change our consequences on the, on the planet. Of course, this is a very well-known um, subject. Uh, the idea to bring it here for the talk was that uh, we are working on uh, an ecological footprint for higher education institutions in a European project, also the EU steps. The ecological footprint is coming out soon in our website. Um, why, why it is important for higher education institutions, and I think yesterday on the, on the talk there was something on this also, why it is important because uh, usually we preach on this, we don't act as universities on this. So having this indicator will give us several opportunities. First, to assess universities, to have an indicator that uh, can um, help to compare them. <laughs> everyone knows that universities, they love rankings. I don't know here, but in Portugal, everyone loves rankings. So it's a way of uh, uh, comparing them. Also, and more important for us is that the university can compare himself during the time. So knowing if uh, they are going well, or they are doing everything well in several aspects of uh, sustainability or on environmental uh, aspects. And in our university, because this is a pilot with some universities, we hope that will spread. <laughs> um, but in our university, one of the first um, impacts was the reflection on uh, indicators that university didn't have. They were not uh, uh, using the data properly. They, they didn't know that they should uh, collect the data and how they should collect the data. So that I think is one of the first uh, consequences that are quite good for us, at least as economists and as data um, uh, people. Um, so the idea of this uh, um, ecological footprint is to monitoring first, second, determining the impact in each of the um, sub uh, categories and raising awareness. As, the, as, at, as it happens with individual uh, footprint, when we calculate ours, then each university can see what is going uh, uh, wrong. Uh, so uh, it's uh, it was um, a reflection on a campus based. Uh, so let me go here. So it was in a, in a campus uh, based. So the idea is uh, that uh, some of the um, actions and the consequences on the planet, the administration directly controls and others that they don't control. The ones that are related with decisions from the rectory, so energy use, uh, travel, um, food, that it was really surprising also the results of the food and is a, a very lively debate in Portugal about uh, 
for example, beef. Out, if they should supply beef on canteens or not, if they should supply just uh, white, uh, um, just like chicken and uh, turkey. Uh, one of the universities, Coimbra, they stopped supplying uh, uh, beef to the students, for example, was one of the, uh, the, the measures, one of the proposals. Um, so, uh, I think that apart from the reflection that we got here uh, and uh, Portugal, Greece uh, and Italy are involved in this project, um, uh, we, we, we think that it's very important to go, as I said, from what uh, is uh, what usually we preach in lectures, in talks, to do it uh, in practice to do it inside. And then um, we thought about also the, the, the part that is not for the measures and uh, that are related with universities but are not uh, controlled by the, the rectory. So commuting of students, the energy at home, we have several students that are away from home. So they rent the house and they, they use uh, energy and they use internet connection and the food that they use. Of course, that because the rectory doesn't uh, have control on this, what we can do is to um, work on awareness for students or giving incentives for them to stop bringing the car, for example. There's a lot of, uh, um, there's a policy, a rectory policy on um, giving incentives to use bikes because Aveiro is a very uh, plain uh, place. So people can uh, cycle very quickly and very easily. So uh, the university is uh, giving uh, um, bicycles to students for them to use the bicycle instead of cars, not even share cars, <laughs> they do. So um, So this is our proposal, as I said, is uh, almost finished, not finished final work is the first proposal. And then there will be the uh, the pilot also, and of course, we are open to um, suggestions and proposals about it, of course, and uh, usually we, we think about them, we speak about them internally, but not outside, but I think it's a good place, uh, a research network to speak about this, is that we have several factors that are very different from university to university. So this indicator at the end can be very different different uh, and can be not comparable between universities, at least in Portugal, and two, are, two universities uh, are in this consortium. The open university, they don't have lectures physically, and ours that we are, uh, we are I mean, in COVID, <laughs> non-COVID context, we have uh, uh, students commuting uh, a lot. Uh, so, the, the indicators are not so com comparable. And, uh, uh, but I think that even if this, uh, this um, ecological footprint doesn't work for rankings that I don't like, they can work for internal comparison, for uh, inferring impact of internal uh, policy of, or internal uh, measures. So this is our website. If you want to have a look, I think in three weeks we will have the ecological footprint of the university available. Of course, every time that we present this, uh, there's someone saying, okay, but this can be applied to any organization. We can do this for museums, we can do this for a municipality, and we are doing it. Our a research group is doing it in Portugal. Um, so this is a kind of indicator that can, can be applied to any organization where people want to think about this properly. They want to think how to collect data, the right data, and to use it uh, in this way in order to have uh, uh, ecological uh, sustainability. So finally, I don't know if I'm too quick. 
Okay. No. <laughs> um, finally, and this is more related because I didn't spoke about economics until now, not so much. But this is a part that is more related with my field of study, of research, uh, that is uh, energy, energy economics, and uh, the role of consumers and prosumers uh, in energy in Europe. Uh, the European Union uh, adopted in 2019 the Clean Energy for All Europeans, the idea of for all is for all, for everyone, not only for uh, large firms or, or firms that have power to um, set prices or to decide in energy markets um, and to give consumers a central and an active position in energy, not only consumption that we are used to, but also the production of energy. Um, I'm very um, excited, even if it's 2019, we know that then COVID came and was really difficult to implement in some countries, namely in Portugal. But I'm very excited about having this participation of communities in energy markets, having um, the possibility of uh, being active in a, in a market that is so important for everything. It's important, I mean, we, we use energy everywhere. <laughs> we, we, human are very energetic. <laughs> we use for mobile phones, we use for TV, we use for heating, we use for mobility. Um, so being able to have uh, an active role on uh, energy markets is very important. And also on this concept of community-based initiatives, having uh, the um, possibility to find the needs of the community and to find the best way to solve problems like uh, energetic poverty, energy poverty, sorry, or uh, unequal distribution of uh, energy. So and that is the reason why I'm excited is related to the social impact of this. Uh, having uh, these uh, initiatives, these projects as also social innovation, having an, um, a saying on um, answering to societal challenges uh, also. So the idea is that there's a collective investment to meet uh, own consumption needs and to share sustainability uh, goals. Of course, that and um, there's uh, uh, already results on that. That having this role uh, as uh, prosumers in uh, energy markets uh, will help to achieve sustainability goals. Also, because the the communities they will uh, uh, manage renewable energy because it's really difficult. First, because it's wrong, it's a wrong policy to have a coal uh, plant, for example, but because it's easy or easily is more, it's easy to invest <laughs> in solar or wind, right? So renewable uh, energy are the priorities for uh, energy communities. So the participation of citizens and communities and uh, municipalities and uh, uh, social economy organizations, for example, uh, as partners in these energy projects uh, may offer new opportunities for citizens to be active and to be actively engaged in energy markets and in energy systems. So there are several studies on the advantages of uh, uh, communities, of energy communities. Some are related with uh, decreasing costs, of course. Uh, so it's less costly to consume energy uh, on these communities uh, than being supplied by large firms. They can, uh, as I say, as I said, help to meet the uh, objectives regarding energy 
um, climate change, they can improve social and territorial cohesion in the country, they can contribute to job creation and improving the competitiveness of a region, um, and they can offer innovative solutions. For some people that is, and finally, uh, there's this sharing of the production for, for the community that is also important. For some of the more um, negationists, that is a word that is almost for, forbidden now, um, they, they, of course, people th uh, think about um, uh, these advantages as having renewable energies that are intermittent, they can cause problems on energy systems, but they cause problems already, right? So we have to solve that. <laughs> and, uh, or that, I mean, I don't know here and all over the world, but in Portugal is always very difficult to find agreement in uh, neighbors assemblies. <laughs> so thinking about uh, citizen communities can be very painful, but I think that people will, um, meet because they want to is not because they buy an apartment and they are in the same building okay uh, i'm very positive about this as you can say as you can see um and uh so i think and in portugal they are just starting uh we, we have other countries where we have uh, uh this con this concept this kind of organizations more developed um but I'm very, very positive. I'm, I'm always very positive about active participation when citizens, they really have a saying, they really, uh, uh, they, they know what they want and they achieve an agreement to, uh, to do something. Of course, that's what we need. We also need uh, large companies that are already in the market. Um, and I think they are aware of that also at least uh, in all the conference where I go to present my, my, my research on this topic, there are always a representative from EDF or a representative from um, a, another big company that wants to know what is happening in this, um, in this uh, subject, not because they feel uh, frightened about it, but because I think they, they know that something is happening and they should be aware of what is happening. So these are the main advantages. I spoke a bit about these advantages, and, uh, but uh, we did a, a study across Europe as a PhD uh, research of a student of mine about the main motivations to participate in energy communities. Uh, these are the ones that are um, uh, or also um, on the literature, but we ask them. And the more important are related with sustainability and environmental concerns. So people really think that participating actively will give them uh, better solutions for sustainability and for envi environmental uh, concerns. Of course, there's the lower energy costs, and uh, in fact, was cu uh, curious to uh, to find out that people that is not uh, or does not belong yet to communities, they they think that that is the main advantage. The ones that are inside, that they know what they are doing. They 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 focus more on environmental reasons or in uh, concerns about environmental and climate impacts. So <laughs> I told you that I would be also speaking about uh, not only research, but what we can do. So we can participate in uh, energy communities. So this is a practical guide. I would be very happy that if at the end of this talk or at the end of the day, you, you, you would search for communities in your countries or in your regions to know how to participate, how to be more active, and of course, study them. There's a lot of topics related with the energy communities that are out there, especially now that this movement is restarting in some countries, uh, but also be part of the change. That is one of the messages that I wanted to 
uh, speak. So, um, so we are at the center of the action. As individual, as researchers, we, uh, I think, we have this wonderful role of um, giving the best information for people to decide. That is what I believe as economists. We, we, we decide based on the information that we have at the, at the point that we have to decide. Uh, we should um, act today to save tomorrow and also today, because as we, we saw, for example, in the overshoot day, um, half of the year, we are already using the planet too much, right? So, uh, so towards sustainability, I think everyone agrees all together and the forwards for nature, people and planet. And thank you for listening and let's talk. So it's time for, for questions. Marta understands Spanish, so yeah, no, if you want in English, English or Spanish. English I, I'm sorry for that already.